Okay, so um, I told you a couple of times that Rust doesn't have a garbage collector, and while that is true, uh, you can fake it anytime you need to with ARC, Atomic Reference Count. So what an ARC is, it is an atomic use size tacked on right before a pointer to your value on the heap. And so we've got my drop again, which will indicate when something drops. To create an arc, arc new, and I put an instance of my droppable type in there. It can be any, almost anything you want can go into an arc. In this case, I just added the drop to illustrate what's going on. Make a bunch of threads. <clears throat> I'm cloning the arc over and over into each of the threads, printing them out. So it, it prints out thread zero to 10 and then shows the drop exactly once. So what magic is going on here? When you create an arc, it makes a pointer to <clears throat> your variable on the heap and a reference count. Whenever you call clone, that reference count is increased. Whenever, some, whenever an instance of the arc is dropped, that reference count is decreased. So you only, so no matter how many times you clone it, you only have one of the thing. It's the same as shared pointer in C++. Um, when that reaches zero, no users anymore, it gets collected. A lot of early garbage collectors, this is exactly how they worked. So this basically is a garbage collector. It's right there for you to use. So if you have a shared resource, um, that you need to pass into threads, you can put it in an arc. You can then use interior immutability to allow parts of it to safely update. You've still got the one of them. Clone is almost instantaneous. It is nanoseconds to increase an atomic integer. <clears throat> um, so if you are finding yourself getting frustrated with the borrow checker and well, er, grr, clone, grr, clone, consider putting an arc around it you can still clone it, but now clone doesn't require that a complete copy be made. You still have one shared variable, um, but it's reference counted. It's effectively garbage collected for you. As long as you eventually run out of clones, it will be destroyed. And um, I'm not gonna talk about circular references. Um, those are a fun way to shoot yourself in the foot with this pattern, but they're also mercifully rare. Um, Arc is very much your friend. So when would you use Arc? And the answer is just like in async, all the time. You might read it, re if you've got a global configuration, read it into an Arc, send clones of that into all the places that need your config, much better than having a global variable. Likewise, if you've got database pools, they're designed to be cloned, you clone access to the pool, that way you've got one set of database connections, physical access to hardware I've seen put through a clone when working with it, um, wor with an arc when working with embedded, if you need some sort of gatekeeper system to uh, handle, handle buffering going into a physical piece of hardware. Effectively, um, arc lets you tell the borrow checker, um, nope, this is meant to be shared. And as long as you handle the mutability using the interior mutability that we looked at, you're golden. Arc is for when ownership isn't clear. I talked about, this is my string. This thread is the only thread going to use it. So I will give it to the thread. Well, if I've got a high fan out situation where I'm gonna be doing 20 things, hand them 20 clones of the arc. I haven't now copied my huge data set 20 times. They all have access to it. Ownership isn't clear. You can even implement drop on your type inside the arc so that when all of the tasks that are running and you don't know which one's gonna finish last, when the last one goes away, it can clean up after itself, save itself to disk, whatever you need to do. So ARC is for when ownership isn't clear. It's for pooled resources, which I already told you. And also when clone is expensive. If you have an enormous data structure, takes up several gigabytes of memory, and you need to use it in several threads, it would really suck to clone that. You're gonna sit and wait while it fills your RAM over and over again. ARC is perfect for that because you can have one copy of it, um, how many lines of code in LibreQOS? Uh, I believe it's, if you include the server backend, over 100,000. 